All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. If you were going to say, I'll do it later, or I'll do it tomorrow or Monday, you're in a program, yep. <laughs> right? Because you actually should be doing it in the moment, right? Right. So then I assert that if you're not in the present moment, you're running a program. And so the more, listen, <sighs> paying attention is being present. And it's a skill. And you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. And you know when they're not present with you because they're not paying attention with you, to you. So then imagine you're going to create and you're not present. H how could you miss the moment of creation? You then are in the known. You're in the familiar uh, past or the predictable future. So that, 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 that sweet spot of the generous present moment, if you keep practicing overcoming your body, overcoming the conditions in your environment, and overcoming that predictable future in the familiar past, and you keep working for the present moment, you are going to develop the habit of being present. And if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, and you're in the present moment, you got a lot of energy to use. You got a lot of energy to execute. You got a lot of energy uh, to design a destiny with. We are wired to be creators. We already know how to do it. You just, you just made up your mind that it was more important than anything else. And, and, and you have that vision, you have that possibility, and the moment you feel that emotion, you're connected to your future. And no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that future. And it's feeling connected to your future, feeling the inspiration, the joy, feeling the exuberance, the, the love for your future every day is going to, just like your body follows your mind to the coffee maker, to the toilet every morning, to the known, your body is going to follow your mind right into that future because that's where your attention and your energy is. So then, yeah, if it isn't happening in your life, then there's some emotion. <laughs> there's some unconscious attitude or thought process, hardwired. There's some habituation of thought, behavior, or emotional reaction that's keeping you as you. So then if your personality creates your personal reality, and it does, and your personality is made of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called her life. So if you want to create a new personal reality, a new life, <laughs> it means you're going to have to change your personality. <laughs> that means you're going to have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about in that 95% and change it. You have to become conscious of your unconscious habits and behaviors, how you speak and modify them. And then you have to look at those emotions that keep you connected to the past and decide, does this emotion belong in my future? And if it doesn't, leave it behind and the memory associated with it. So most people try to create a new personal reality has the same personality and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. And the act of becoming is a function of overcoming. So that means you got to light a match in a dark place. And when you sit down and all of a sudden you hear those voices, I can, it's too hard, I'll never change, it's my ex's fault, it's my boss's fault, you know, uh, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too old, I'm too tired, it's too late. And those are the thoughts that are the boundary of the known. And now you're stepping out into new territory and the body that's been conditioned to be the mind emotionally is saying, don't go, don't, don't leave the, uh, the known here. Stick with guilt, it's much better. Stick with suffering, at least you can predict it. And yet your conscious mind is wanting to go for a ride and your body's going, whoa. So, so then it may take a little time to help the body out of the past. It's, it's, it takes some time, right? Uh, so then the person can have a, a great meditation and feel really connected and then get up and then get frustrated on the freeway and judging everybody else. I mean, you just disconnected from the energy of your future and you're back to the energy of your past. Don't expect anything to change. And if you tell me it's because of that person or that circumstance, I'm going to say, oh, you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim in your life. And so there is a period, a grace period of transformation where we have to cross this river from the old self to the new self. And that, that void, that unknown, 
is the neurological, the biological, the chemical, the hormonal, the genetic death of the old self. And, and the most people, the moment they step out, and the hardest part about change is making a new choice. The moment you make a new choice, get ready. You're leaving the known. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty. You can't predict. You're not in the known any longer. And most people, you know, they step out and they hear that voice. It's too hard. You never change. And they believe in that thought. And that thought leads to the same choice, which leads to the same behavior, creates the same experience, produces the same emotion. And then they say, oh, this Aubrey feels right to me. No, that feels familiar. So, so then if you're becoming conscious of how you speak, you're sitting in your meditation and you're becoming aware of how you act that you complain and you blame and you make excuses you feel sorry for yourself you judge other people now you're conscious of what you were unconscious of that's a victory too because consciousness brings awareness and there's an energy that goes along with that and now all of a sudden you're not in the program you're the consciousness observing the program you're outside the jar you're objectifying your subjective self. You're seeing yourself through the eyes of someone else. And then when you look at those emotions and you say, my goodness, I, I didn't even know it was guilt. I just, I, it, I, this is how I always feel. I didn't even know it was guilt. Now I know. All right, well, now that you know, you can't not know. So then what are you gonna do? You're gonna live with the knowing that you're, you're a victim or you're guilty or you're suffering? No, the insight isn't gonna do anything until you initiate some type of change. So then, you say, I'm going to stop blaming, complaining, make excuses, feeling sorry for myself, judging other people. Now you're in the river and there's a tug for the brain and body to go back to the familiar past. And, and every day, if you just work on practicing and changing it, you will go from one state of being to another state of being and you will begin to think differently. What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? That's a good question. What behaviors do I want to demonstrate in one day? The act of closing your eyes. As an athlete, you know this, and you begin to rehearse in your mind, mentally rehearse what you're about to do. Begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. It's now a map to the future, and if you keep hitting that hardware over and over again, the hardware is going to become a software program. And who knows? You just may start acting like a happy person. There's no magic there. You're, you're actually following suit of how you primed your brain. And it's no different than training in any sport or dancing the salsa or whatever you do. When, you, when you're distracted by your environment and you got your cell phone and you're <coughs> tweeting and you're Instagramming and Facebooking and whatever people do, you're distracted by that feeling. But I now know that if you take a person and you say, okay, close your eyes, <laughs> sit in the, in the silence of any external stimulation, remove the environment, sit your body down like an animal, body is the animal, tell it to stay. I'm gonna feed you, you can check your cell phone, you can shower, you can have your coffee, but when I say, and so then here comes the challenge, right? So, and, and then, if you say then, you're not going to live in the familiar, uh, familiar past or predictable future. You're not going to think about how long you've been meditating, what you got to do. You, you labor uh, for that present moment. People think when they do this that they're doing something wrong because there's such discomfort that comes with mm. it. But they're in the unknown. They're actually doing it right. People say, I, I think I'm meditating wrong. I always say, oh, no, 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 you're doing it right. Because when you notice that your body wants to get up and check your cell phone or have a cup of coffee and you become aware that it's on autopilot and wants to do that and you say uh -uh, come on over here and you return it back to the present moment you're executing a will now yeah. that's greater than the program and if the person wants to just get angry while they're sitting there there's an arousal and they notice the body is amping up and revving up and they settle it back down now they're telling the body it's no longer the mind that they're the mind. Now, we've researched this, and it's tedious in the beginning at first because David is fighting Goliath. But if you keep practicing it, just like training an animal, sooner or later the body acquiesces. Sooner or later the body is trained to a new mind, and when that happens, there's a liberation of energy. Mm -hmm. The body goes from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and there goes that emotion, literally liberated from the body as energy. 
So the person who has the strong emotion to some circumstance in their life, and they're, they're working and lowering the volume of that emotion, the more they lower the volume of that emotion, the more they're going to take their attention off that person and problem, and they're going to take their power back. There's going to be a break in their attention from that circumstance. And now they build their own field. And now there's energy to heal. Now there's energy to create a new life. Now there's energy for the mystical moment because they've overcome their old personality self. So I think, you know, it's not like thinking positively. That's yeah, not yeah, the message. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's overcoming, 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 overcoming until we become somebody else. And when that occurs and the person starts thinking differently and they start acting differently, and they start feeling differently. They're a new personality, and yeah. they, they start seeing those synchronicities and serendipities. Now, crossing that river of change, the creative process now gets exciting because what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What kind of attention and intention do you want to place so that that becomes the loudest voice in your head? Mm -hmm. And if you keep practicing it, the hardware becomes a software program, and it'll say, Jay, you can do anything. <laughs> Jay, uh, you live in no time and accomplish everything. Jay, you're unlimited. You just got to hang with it. On the other side of this is greatness. Whatever you want to program in there, you get to program in there. If you sat down and say, how am I going to be with my wife, my husband, my partner? How am I going to be with my kids? How am I going to be at work with my coworkers? How am I going to be in traffic? And you close your eyes and you begin to rehearse in your mind. If you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining. So now the brain goes from a record of the past to a map to the future. Now you're installing the hardware. Keep practicing it, mm -hmm. it becomes automatic, it becomes easier. Now it's a software program. You may just start behaving differently. And then if you said, well, listen, I'm not gonna wait for my healing to feel gratitude. I'm not gonna wait for my new relationship to feel love. I'm gonna actually teach my body emotionally what that future feels like before it happens. Now, this is a big turnaround for a lot of people because we're so reliant on the outer world to change our inner world. I think it's the creation of more experiences. And I think to, to f I think we came from source, from singularity, from oneness. Uh, and we have descended down into density, uh, fooled by our senses into separation. Mm -hmm. And every single being has a spark of oneness of the divine within them and we got so separate that we now have our own free will to answer the question is there more because mm -hmm. if you're oneness it's it kind of boring after a while like is there anything else well the moment you ask if there's anything else you're no longer oneness you're something other than oneness right and you're mm -hmm. a, 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 a different consciousness separate from oneness so i think then we live life and then when we can predict the feeling of everything that can happen in our life and it gets boring and we're not impressed by anyone or anything, we ask the same question. Is there more? And that's when the soul goes, all right, well, it's been how many lifetimes you've been doing this? Okay, there's an awakening. And, the, and we ask that question and then all of a sudden we start getting information and books and stuff and meet people and it gets exciting. and. And it's, the, it's, it's how the universe works. And so we climb out of this. And I just think there's so many incredible experiences that are left in the unknown uh, that we get to have. And, and then, of course, when, when the journey's over and you've evolved to that point, uh, then you take that wisdom and you, you say, here's what I learned. And it was scary down there. And I was like, <laughs> boy, I tell a great story. And then you hang out there and you go, is there anything else besides all? And then here we go again. It just never ends. <laughs> Inside or that's my